today we're going to cover how to forecast while factoring in seasonality. We were provided historical data from fiscal year 2019 to 2024 for both the sales volume data and the financials. Using this, we need to forecast out fiscal year 2025 revenue while factoring in monthly seasonality. We were also provided some forward-looking assumptions where the company just provides that fiscal year 2025 will just follow historical trends. The workflow is going to be, we'll first analyze historical data, then determine the trends, set up our assumptions tab for our forecast, and lastly, using that information, forecast out revenue for fiscal year 2025. Let's begin the process. First, we need to update the historicals tab, and I'm going to begin by bringing in the sales volume, financials, and the price per product for each year and month. Notice how the information is broken down by the year and the period. So we need to first manipulate the source data so that we could break down the date into a period and a year. So let's add two columns to the right, call this period and then call this year. And anytime you need to quantify a date, always use the month function and the year function. This will essentially convert your dates into the year that it reflects and into the number that reflects the month. We also need to do the same thing for our financial information. So I'm going to call this period and then year. So we'll use month to convert the date into a number and we'll use year to convert the date into the year number. Now that we have this information, we can then begin bringing in historical data. For the sales volume, we are going to sum the sales volume based on the period and based on the year. The year is going to be this header over here and the period is going to be this value over here. Sum the whole thing and we now have historical sales volume. The financials are going to follow the same process where we need to add all the credit. So if we take a look at our source data, we have no debit entries because this is a revenue account and it looks like there weren't any reversals. And consolidate by period and the year. So again, year is going to be the year over there and Let's just copy this over. And we now have the financials by the year and the period. For the price per product, it is simply just going to be financials divided by the volume sold. And I'm just going to average the price and let's all convert this into two decimal places with a thousand separator. It looks like prices have been pretty consistent throughout the periods, so there is no seasonality for the prices. However, the prices have increased every year in which we'll analyze in the next section right now. Now that we have all the historical data, we can then begin analyzing the growth rate and the seasonality percentage. For sales volume, I'm going to bring in the sales volume over here. And year over year growth rate is going to be the current year divided by the previous year minus one. And we can see that the year over year growth rate also has a growth rate. So I'm just going to add one more row at the bottom. I'm just going to call this increase in growth rate, where we're just going to subtract one from the other. Now the increase in growth rate is not that consistent, so we do have to make an assumption here. And the growth rate that I'm going to apply is actually just going to be the average of these four, which is around 1.01%. It's also beneficial to be a bit conservative when it comes to revenue forecast, because if you're too optimistic, there's a high chance that you won't be able to meet the target. And revenue is usually driven by external forces, so you don't have as much control. So the growth rate that I'm going to apply for 2025 is going to be the previous growth rate plus the average of the prior four year growth rate. 
which is around 10.1%. And for 2025, we can then apply the growth rate for 2025, which gets us to the annual sales volume of 188,000. Normally, you would reach out to the business leader that overlooks the sales volumes and drives volume increases to get an updated assumption on what they think the growth rate and sales volume will look like in 2025. But when it's purely data driven, we're going to use an assumption to determine the growth rate for 2025. Now for the price, it is going to follow the same process where I'm going to bring in the price from below. And I'm just gonna copy the formula from here. And I can see that the price actually just increases by 5% every year. So I'm just going to bring in the 5% from before and multiply this with a 5% increase, which the 2025 price per product is expected to be around $27.5. Now let's begin analyzing the seasonality. And this is where it really gets interesting. First, we're going to analyze the historical seasonality where we are going to divide the monthly volume sold by the annual total. And I'm just gonna apply this throughout and just wanna make sure that it is 100, which it's not. And it looks like my formula is actually adding the date, which is not correct. So rather than from row 53, I'm just gonna change it to 54. And now we have, let's actually add another total here as well. And we have 100% here as well. And now that we have the seasonality, let's first determine what the average seasonality per month is under the section called 2025 pre. I'm just gonna calculate the average over here. And below, this is where I analyze for any outliers that I want to exclude from the average to be used in 2025 forecast. We have the monthly figures here and we have the average here, and we're going to use a margin of error to determine if any of the months are drastically different than the average calculated over here. All we're gonna do is simply minus the seasonality for that period versus the average. And I can see that they're mostly close to each other. And if I were to specify a margin of error of 0.5%, what we can do here is if the difference or the absolute value of the difference is greater than the margin of error, then I want to call out outlier otherwise normal. And I can see everything is normal, but if I were to reduce my margin of error to 0.1%, you'll notice that some outliers do pop up, which then gets excluded from the formula that I'm going to set up right now. So let's average ifs, where the outlier status is normal. And as I change my margin of error to accept more seasonality values, you'll notice that the forecast for 2025 also changes to factor in more values to calculate the average. A 0.5% margin error is actually very small. And given that everything is still normal, we can see that these seasonality values that we're going to use for our forecast is pretty reliable. And now that we have a projected 2025 annual sales volume and 2025 price per product with seasonality for each month, we can then begin setting up our assumptions. First, the annual volume is going to be the 186,000. Volume seasonality is going to be, we're going to look up the period from here and return 2025 forecasted seasonality. Price seasonality, we did not have to calculate it because when we saw the historical data, we can tell that there really isn't any seasonality throughout the year. So all we have to do is just reference the 27.47 per product. And now that we have assumptions, this is the easiest part where we are now going to bring in our drivers and forecast out revenue. So for seasonality allocation, let's look up the period based on this assumption over here. And then for sales volume, 
we're going to multiply this by the annual volume expected. And when we calculate the total, we can see that the annual total is the 186,000 that we are expecting for FY25. Lastly, for price per product, can search the period index based on this assumption over here. And then for revenue, we're just gonna multiply the sales volume against the price per product. And let's just calculate the total to see an FY25 total revenue of 5.1 mil. And if we quickly just reference back to the historicals, if we bring in 2025, let's actually bring this in over here. And we determined a growth rate. We can see that the financials also steadily grew because first our prices also grow every year. But in addition, our sales volume growth rate also exponentially increased. And we can see that based on the annual growth rate of financials, the 5.1 mil is a pretty reasonable forecast given historical growth rates. And with that, we have completed the FY25 forecast. This is a very useful way to forecast with seasonality because you have full visibility and control of the seasonality allocation that you're applying to your model. There are other functions in Excel that will also factor in seasonality for you. For example, forecast.ets seasonality. And this is fine to use as well, but you kind of lose the factor of visibility into the assumptions and drivers of your forecast model. I hope this video helped you get an insight to one of the methods that you can use to forecast with seasonality. And this file will be available on my website for you to practice yourself. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. I'm going to be uploading more educational content, so follow for more.